we've seen our fair share of murderous clowns in recent fiction. Hunter x Hunter has its very own psychopathic clown named Hisoka Morrow. If you've either watched or read the series, you probably not only know him, but also have a strong opinion of the guy. So today, we're going to be breaking down Hisoka's character in terms of his story, powers, and even future prospects. Story so far. Hisoka made his first appearance during the 287th Hunter exam. At that time, he was the primary antagonist of the arc, where he proved to be one hell of an opposing force. The previous year, Hisoka enrolled in the Hunter exam but failed to pass after killing 20 applicants and almost killing an examiner. A year later, after easily passing the first test, Hisoka was at it again. He was hunting down, impaling, and brutally killing his fellow examinees like a wolf hidden among a flock of sheep. He was opposed by the team of Gon, Killua, Kurapika, and Leorio during this ongoing massacre. After a brief but scary encounter with Gon and a rather mysterious forfeit of a scheduled duel with Kurapika, his deeds in this arc were over. Furthermore, he had now proven himself as someone that our heroes had to be wary of. See, Hisoka is an absolute wild card in the world of Hunter x Hunter. He's one of those characters that always keeps you on your toes. When you're around him, you can't afford to let your guard down. He's a powerful, enigmatic, and bloodthirsty man whose entire life's goal is finding and killing strong opponents. On top of that, he has a self-serving nature that makes him prone to manipulating and betraying even his allies to fulfill these murderous ambitions. Another creepy trait Hisoka has displayed is grooming future opponents in order to gain greater pleasure while facing them when they've reached their full potential. This also describes his dynamic with our main character, Gon. Hisoka had developed a morbid fascination with Gon based on the boy's potential battle prowess and was eager to watch him grow in order to face him at his peak. This dynamic between Hisoka and Gon developed more clearly in the Heavens Arena arc. In that section, we were first introduced to the concept of Nen as well. More than that, it was in this section that we got to see Hisoka's true combat skills and his abilities in the art of Nen usage. In fact, the very first displays of Nen in the series came directly from him. The first clear application was when Hisoka put the fear of God into Gon and Killua using the sheer ferocity of his Ren, preventing them from advancing to the 200th floor at their current power levels. Another example which predates even that is the use of his playing cards in killing people at the Hunter exam. We'll explain that more in a bit. He practically urged Gon and Killua to learn Nen, which resulted in an eventual clash between the trickster and our young protagonist. However, before his face-off with Gon, he went one-on-one -on -one with a skilled Nen user named Castro. It was in this fight that we got to discover how deceptive and unpredictable Hisoka can be on the battlefield. During the fight, he set traps, played mind games, and eventually killed Castro in a brutal manner. Hisoka would then face Gon in a match where the latter would prove to be an actually competent opponent. Even though Hisoka was mostly in control during their battle, Gon showed a level of tenacity and skill that pleased Hisoka to the point of making him extremely excited. Hisoka ended up defeating Gon during their clash in a non-fatal manner, but claimed their next fight would be to the death. At this point in the series, Hisoka had already been established as a sociopath with beyond questionable morals. But even more than that, he's proven himself to be a powerful antagonist so far. We've never really gotten to understand why he is the way he is. However, Hisoka's actions in the series aren't always antagonistic. In fact, in his next appearance, which came during the York New City arc, he was actually helpful to the main characters. Speaking of helpful deeds, you could support this channel in a very simple way. Subscribe with notifications on to never miss an upload, and smash that like button for some plot armor today. Early on, Hisoka had already infiltrated the Phantom Troop by killing and secretly replacing their fourth member, all in order to fulfill his goal of fighting the gang's leader, Krollo. Unknown to the troop, Hisoka and Kurapika were in cahoots in order to satisfy their respective needs at the expense of the group's plans. Hisoka's plan was to undermine the spiders in order to aid Kurapika on his vengeance quest, while the latter would create the opportunity for Hisoka to finally get the showdown with Krollo he so desired. But things didn't go as planned for Hisoka. Before he would get to Krolo, Kurapika had already sealed the troop leader's Nen using his Judgment Chain ability. Hisoka was not interested in facing a powerless Krolo, referring to him as a broken toy, as he lost the very thing that sparked Hisoka's interest. But he still didn't give up on his aspiration to fight Krolo. In order to do that, he would first have to remove Kurapika's Nen curse. In light of this development, he began his search for a Nen Exorcist, which would then lead him to Greed Island. During this tumultuous and violent arc, Hisoka became a supporting character in a more literal sense. While taking the name Krolo, Hisoka entered the Greed Island game, accompanied by a few troop members, in order to find the specialist needed for the spider's leader. 
While on the island, he took a detour to do something rather surprising. He joined the team of Gon, Killua, Biscuit, and Gorenu to go up against Razor and his pirates in an extreme game of dodgeball. Hisoka played the game seriously, showing off incredible feats with his Nen and even leading Gon's team to victory through his efforts. Soon after, he met up with the troop members who had already secured a Nen Exorcist, and they left the game since they had completed their mission. It seems weird, but everything Hisoka did on Greed Island seemed to be in favor of other people to some extent. Well, remember, he intends to enjoy the thrill of fighting these benefactors at their full power, so it was more of a roundabout way of fulfilling his own ambitions. Afterwards, apart from a single frame of him approaching Krolo, Hisoka was basically absent throughout the Chimera Ant arc. However, he was very present in the one that followed, the 13th Chairman Election Arc. He made a surprise appearance at the election in search of Jing Freak specifically. There, he showed disappointment at the Zodiacs and the other hunters available due to their power levels. But shortly after, he lit up again as he was reunited with Illumi Zoldic. Illumi then hired him to kill Aluka, his youngest and most dangerous sibling. Throughout this series, Illumi is the only character that Hisoka is shown to have a real connection with. While we can't go so far as to call it an actual friendship, it's something akin to an organic codependence. They connive together and do whatever devilish deed the other requests. But even with that, Hisoka would consider killing Killua to invoke the rage of Illumi. He would be willing to throw away the only tangible relationship he had for the pleasure of facing an enraged, powerful opponent. This just shows how twisted Hisoka's mind really is. During this mission to kill Aluka, he fought and decapitated a veteran Zoldic butler named Goto. And just like that, the psychopath was back on the prowl. Not long after his fight with Goto, he committed yet another murder, claiming the life of Teradane Neutral. During the Succession Contest arc, Hisoka had his biggest showdown yet. He finally achieved his dream and engaged in a fight to the death with Krolo Lucilfer. After an epic spectacle at Heaven's Arena, Hisoka would lose the fight and die explosively at the hands of Krolo. But apparently, even death is not the end of our favorite battle clown. Hisoka managed to do something no other character in the series has done so far. He cast a post-mortem Nen command seconds before his death, an order that would prompt his abilities to activate moments after his death and restart his heart, thereby reviving him. From there, Hisoka covered up the wounds from his battle with Krolo and decided he was going to kill every member of the Phantom Troop. And he certainly didn't waste any time with that. Not long after that incident, he killed Shellmark and Cortopi. Hisoka's next and most recent appearance is aboard the Black Whale, where he seemingly intends to kill the remaining members of the Phantom Troop. Now with all that out of the way, let's look into the powers that make Hisoka such a menace in the Hunter x Hunter world. Current Abilities With everything Hisoka has done in this story, it is clear he has more than a few screws loose in his head. But if you think for a second that Hisoka's craziness makes him any less of a fighter, you are dead wrong. Hisoka is a combat genius. He has a meticulous and deceptive fighting style that makes him one of the most unpredictable and dangerous people to go up against in this world. On more than one occasion, he has displayed extraordinary physical and mental fortitude. But still, what makes him truly deadly is his overwhelming level of mastery in the field of Nen. Without a doubt, Hisoka is one of the most skilled Nen users in the entire series. Even his playing cards, which he uses so casually to commit mass murder, are a product of precise Nen application. Hisoka basically reinforces normal paper cards with his Nen, using a technique called Shu, making them harder, sharper, and capable of actually being used to kill. Hisoka is a transmuter. In case you've forgotten, transmuters are a class of Nen users capable of reforming and reshaping their aura to mimic an existing substance. Hisoka's main Nen ability is called Bungee Gum. This is a power that transforms his aura into a sticky and elastic substance that bears the properties of rubber and gum. And maybe you're thinking, rubber and gum? How's that deadly? Well, the answer you're looking for is Hisoka. As proof of his incredible intellect, Hisoka crafted a pretty accurate theory regarding Nen users. He said they tend to manifest abilities that fit their respective personalities. If Bungee Gum was granted to someone as straightforward and heroic as Gon, he may have become the most worthless Nan user in the entire series. Because yes, Bungee Gum can't be directly used to harm an opponent. However, the ability fits the sinister and deceptive nature of Hisoka so well. It offers him a plethora of sneaky attack options that could turn the tides of a battle in his favor at any point. Hisoka has applied Bungee Gum in a variety of ways, including setting traps, clinging to objects or people, catching and deflecting high-speed projectiles, and running on walls. He can even emit a piece of his aura and attach an object to a person using the adhesive property of gum. Bungee Gum is an immensely durable and versatile ability that's enabled Hisoka to beat a lot of Nen users. 
even opponents with more vicious abilities than his own. He even applied a more advanced version of bungee gum to replicate his damaged body parts after his fatal encounter with Krollo. And as if that wasn't enough, Hisoka has a second ability named Texture Surprise. This is an ability that allows him to change the appearance and texture of flat surfaces, such as sheets of paper, to whatever form he desires. This is another technique that fits Hisoka's deceptive antics perfectly, a bit of illusion to add to the magician's bag of tricks. It was this same ability that enabled Hisoka to blend in with the Phantom Troop and escape being caught when Krollo checked their fates. It could even be used to cover up a brutal injury, making the damaged body part seem completely normal. That application directly followed Hisoka's use of Postmortem Nen. But what is Postmortem Nen? It was described as Nen that intensifies after death. It is a version of Nen that lingers and grows even after the user has passed on due to the intense emotion they feel as their life comes to an end. Before Hisoka's use of it, it had been applied in two previous cases. The first of which was in the clash between Gon and Neferpito. Pito felt intense fear and desire to protect the king, and this made them push their Turf Sakura ability to go beyond its limits. Because of this, it was able to activate even after Pito's death and manipulate their corpse into dealing a serious blow to Gon. The second was during Krollo's explanation of how he acquired his sun and moon powers. Normally, Krollo is unable to keep the abilities of dead people in his bandit secret, but this situation was different. The former wielder of the Sun and Moon ability was an elder at Meteor City, who even as he died had an intense desire to protect his people. This caused his ability to linger in Krollo's book even after he passed, but in an even more powerful form. Unlike these two cases, Hisoka had knowledge that Postmortem Nen existed. He applied it in his moment of death to cast a command that would force his bungee gum to linger after he died and revive him. Hisoka now has access to this enhanced Nen and his abilities have evolved, maybe to an extent we can't even comprehend. Now that we know everything Hisoka has done with his powers, let's look into some of the things he might be able to do with his advanced techniques in the coming arcs. Potential Future Abilities Bungee Gum Prosthetics As previously said, the first thing Hisoka did after resurrecting himself was to replace and cover up his damaged body parts using bungee gum and texture surprise. But what if he can take this idea and stretch it even further using his new overwhelming power? What if Hisoka is now capable of replacing huge parts of his body with bungee gum? We saw him replace his fingers with it, but he may be able to do even more and replace entire limbs with the same technique to create prosthetics. It's definitely not outside Hisoka's scope of possible developments given how easily he wielded Postmortem Nen to revive himself. Body Morphing Another possibility for Hisoka is the ability to morph his body into something composed entirely of bungee gum. This would make him infinitely more durable in battle as he'd become virtually impossible to harm. This would of course also make him much more deadly, given the fact that his body would have the properties of rubber and gum. With this physical upgrade, it would be extremely difficult to escape him. And yes, this would make him seem similar to a certain superpowered pirate, but we can assure you that he'd use these powers for anything but heroic deeds. Bungee Gum Clones If he could alter his body to become a sticky man, it would certainly not be outside his scope of abilities to be able to create clones of himself through emitted bungee gum. Hisoka is a character fond of mind games, especially in battle. This ability would not only allow him to deceive his opponents, but ultimately outnumber them in an all-out assault. Gum Trap Remember when Hisoka emitted his Nen onto a dodgeball and made it stick to Razor? Well, what if he could take that gum-based ability and amplify it on a much larger scale? Hisoka might very well be able to emit an even larger quantity of aura onto a battlefield, which would ensure that his opponent is trapped completely. It is certainly not out of character for him to attempt such a tactic in battle. He would create a pool of bungee gum in a particular area and lure his opponent into that pool, leaving them unable to escape. This would be great for interrogating or easily killing one of his targets. Hardening Remember how we said earlier that even with all of bungee gum's capabilities, it can't be used to physically harm an opponent due to its glue-like nature? As a result of this, whenever Hisoka wishes to use bungee gum in a direct attack, he attaches it to something and swings it at an opponent. Against Krollo, he even used a severed head to do this out of desperation. But what if Bungee Gum could be hardened? Imagine how deadly he would be if Hisoka's aura could instantly cause damage to an opponent upon contact in the form of a slice or a punch. This would make his abilities beyond terrifying. More than that, he could even be able to change his Bungee Gum into specific weapons such as blades, hammers, and spears. This would mean certain death for anyone cocky enough to attack him at close range. Propulsion also, if you recall, Hisoka has the ability to launch objects at opponents after he's trapped them in a strap of bungee gum. So, what if he can take that even further and launch an entire person or group of people from miles away? 
he'd only have to make more bungee gum which wouldn't be difficult for him. Then after getting his target in place, he'd use it as a form of slingshot, firing them far, far away. This ability could also be applied in non-offensive ways. It could be used as a great means of transportation or escape for either him or an ally in extreme situations. Enhanced Texture Surprise While acknowledging the ways in which bungee gum could have evolved, we should certainly not forget Hisoka's other ability. Texture Surprise may have developed alongside bungee gum to an unprecedented level. For one thing, Hisoka may not even be limited to pieces of paper anymore. He might be able to apply Texture Surprise to larger and more complex structures. Imagine Hisoka being able to change the appearance of an entire building to resemble something entirely different. This would make it a lot easier for him to entrap and even kill his targets. He might even be able to apply his texture surprise to weapons, making them look like something else or making himself appear unarmed. It would be the perfect trick to kill whatever unlucky soul would face him and even help him bypass surveillance systems and abilities. In a way, this would be similar to how Henrik can change items into animals with Biohazard. Invisibility as noted, Hisoka has applied Texture Surprise to himself to hide severe injuries by mimicking his own skin texture and appearance using sheets of paper. But since his Nen has evolved, what if he could take this to the next level? Hisoka could also be able to make himself invisible using Texture Surprise. What if he could cover his entire body in sheets of paper and use Texture Surprise to blend into his environment? This would literally take him out of sight and increase his chances of sneaking up on whatever adversary he might face. Transformation Hisoka could also be able to directly transform his body by combining bungee gum and texture surprise. What if Hisoka could take the form of another character? We've seen a similar ability used by Shiapoof when he disintegrated his body on a cellular level and reformed it into the appearance of another being. But Hisoka wouldn't have to go through a complex process such as that. He'd simply restructure his body to fit that character's stature using bungee gum and apply texture surprise to change his looks to match theirs. This ability would be really convenient for Isoka, as he could then infiltrate whatever faction he wished to and commit more crimes. Whether or not he displays these abilities in the coming arcs, one thing that's certain is that Hisoka is definitely going to cause more mayhem with his enhanced powers. Now let's look at what the future might hold for him as the story progresses. Possible Future Appearances When we last saw Hisoka, he was on the Black Whale, which is currently headed to the Dark Continent. This creates many possibilities for what is to come in the Violent Clown story. But first and foremost, let's not forget that Hisoka's goal after gaining a second life was to kill every member of the Phantom Troop. This is probably the reason why he's on the Black Whale. The Phantom Troop themselves aim to kill Hisoka for good this time too. So it makes a lot of sense to say that a clash between Hisoka and the Phantom Troop is on the way. Number 1. Hisoka vs. The Phantom Troop the build-up is already there. After everything that's transpired between Hisoka and the troop members, from York New City to the Succession Arc, it would be epic to finally get an all-out battle between Hisoka and the Spiders. Even if it ends up being Hisoka hunting them and killing them off one by one as he did with Shalmark and Cortopi, it would still be thrilling. However, an epic one-man army fight between Hisoka and the rest of the Phantom Troop would be a great way to showcase Hisoka's absurd new level of power. Number 2. Hisoka vs. Krolo Rematch if Hisoka succeeds in ridding the world of the Phantom Troop members, he will indeed have to contend with a very angry leader. This could set the stage for a long-awaited rematch between Hisoka and Krolo, where Hisoka would likely come out on top. You should know how these things work by now. Epic rematches never go well for the previous winner, especially when the opponent has achieved a significant upgrade in power level. Hisoka is the first man to actively wield post-mortem Nen, so this might even make him the most powerful human alive. Krolo may not even stand a chance. And the first fight they had was almost entirely one-sided, given the fact that they fought under Krolo's ideal conditions. Hisoka clearly admitted this after his resurrection. Now that we know he has learned his lesson, there's a high chance that Hisoka will have the advantage in their rematch, and Krolo will be very dead by the end of it. Number 3. Hisoka Challenges Jing to a Fight In the 13th Chairman election, we learned that Hisoka has an interest in Jing Freaks. It has been stated on more than one occasion that Gon's father is one of the most powerful hunters currently alive. And if you know Isoka, you'd know that the thought of facing a man of that caliber would be exactly the kind of thing he's into. Since they're both aboard the Black Whale, they could very well run into each other, either before reaching or on the Dark Continent. With a powerful hunter like Jing in his sights, an unhinged man like Isoka wouldn't pass up the opportunity to at least challenge him to a fight. He might even try to force him to engage through blackmail or other underhanded means. A fight between Hisoka Maro and Jing Freaks, two enigmatic figures, would indeed be an incredible treat for us. Number 4, Hisoka challenges Beyond Netero to a fight. This next speculation has a similar base as the one with Jing. Even though Hisoka has never met and has no business with Beyond Netero, he could very well challenge him to a fight on their first meeting. 
Beyond is the son of Isaac Netero, and it's possible he could be more powerful than his father. The sight of a man that powerful could entice the bloodthirsty psycho into challenging him. Back during the Hunter exams, Hisoka told Isaac that he wished to fight him, even though they had just met. So it's not hard to imagine a similar scenario when Hisoka meets Beyond, especially if he realizes who he's related to. This could play out in any number of ways, given that we don't know much about Beyond's character currently. Number 5, Hisoka vs. Gon Rematch At Heaven's Arena, Hisoka displayed an uncanny fixation on Gon during their battle. And even though Hisoka ended up completely dominating their fight, he stipulated that the next time they met, it would be a fight to the death. Even though Gon has currently lost his abilities and Hisoka is aboard the Black Whale, this could still work. Gon will probably find a way to get his powers back and maybe even become stronger. There's a high probability that this upgraded Hisoka will return from his voyage to the Dark Continent. And if he finds out that Gon is powered up again, he might want that rematch he promised. Using the same rematch logic we used with Krolo, Gon may very well win that fight. Knowing Gon's personality though, he may not agree to kill Hisoka, but the fight would still be a great way to conclude their relationship. Anyway, that's everything on Isoka. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jack Stansbury, and we'll see you next time.